no matter where you travel in the world, you will find people who do anything to avoid graveyards. Like this one where I am today, Lusaka's Leopards Hill Cemetery. But of course, in the course of our lives, most of us encounter death. And without exception, all of us will one day end up at a place like this. Death is very much in the news these days because of the coronavirus pandemic. It is undoubtedly one of the most sensitive topics known to humanity. For this reason, people whose job it is to take care of the dead are often viewed with confusion and apprehension. In a moment, we we'll hear from a man who makes a living from death. But first, how do some of our young people feel about a job that involves death, dead bodies and grieving relatives? Sure, do that. Yeah, it's a job, and then it involves money. With this high economy, I would. Yeah, I wouldn't. Why? Uh, well, um, I once visited a mortuary when um, I lost a cousin, and we are we are, we are the ones that were taking the body to the mortuary. Well, it was kind kind of the the experience there. It was like a different change of atmosphere for me, so I didn't like it. Uh, honestly, I know I'll find myself there, but dead bodies, nah. I don't know what they're scared of, because even if you, you are dead, you are still a human, so there's nothing like to fear. It is quite clearly a solemn undertaking, the business of death. But while most of us avoid the topic of death and only deal with it when we have to, death is an everyday matter for morticians. So what is it like to inhabit this world of grief and death? What is it like to be that person taking care of dead bodies? At the end of the day, someone just has to do it when someone you know, passes on and everything. So for us, it's a normal thing like any other normal job which people do. And it's always, we're always there each time they need our services. The moment the body comes here, first of all, I think for our safety, we do the disinfection of the body. After disinfecting the body, that's when we, depending on what the people, the relatives have requested for, the others who don't want to go for the embalming, the others who just want to, just the undertaking of the body, that's the cleaning, you know, the cosmetic, cosmetic part of it, and up to the time they, you know, they bury. But the other time, the others who would come for the body to be preserved, where they want to take the body out, you know, maybe to a different town or country, we do that kind of preservation here. And what challenges do you face? on an everyday basis running this business or looking after dead bodies? Well, the challenges are not that much, per se, but I think, because the main, I think the main ones I would I think share with you is different cultures from different kinds of people we tend to, you know, to attend to. So what cultures come? Uh, they are quite different, because even within the country, you know, the people from different, you know, ethical, ethical you know, uh, uh, you know, places where they would want you to do it in a certain way they would want, you know, according to their traditional plant. These are the challenges we go through. But you all in all, the experience where people are burying within, let's say, Lusaka, we don't really have that much. We do only have that much of, you know, challenge. But we only have that much of challenge when people are going out of town, especially these people who bury in the villages and things like them. What satisfaction do you get from your job? Well, to me, I think it was a calling. I think I not really enjoy, but I think I, I, I feel blessed to, to help out the people, it's very the, big, the grieving you know, families, to lighten up their burden. Lightening up their burden yes. means that you are doing certain things that will actually help them lighten Absolutely. up their burden. Absolutely. So exactly. Because you know, we, tie, we tend to die differently. We, sometimes we die in road accidents, sometimes we die after maybe suffering for some time, you know, then we tend to lose weight here and there. So I think we, that's where I come in, to just bring back the, the lifelike appearance, you know, to try a bell means to make someone look like they're just sleeping and, you know, peacefully and things like that. And I think that is a big consolation, especially from the bereaved family. That's what I normally do. Are there any rituals that you perform? No, of course not. <laughs> no, no. Absolutely no, sure? No, no, no. Not Are you a religious person? Yes, I am. What religion? I'm an Anglican. <laughs> <laughs> I do go to church. <laughs> so, yeah. what is it like to deal with death on an everyday basis? Well, for me, it's like any other work. 
I mean, like the, what, the way what you do, you walk in an office, you touch your files, is it a PC or whatever? Just the same thing like what we'd go through here. Sometimes have lunch, eat whilst working on your body? Well, not in the theater, but well, after, out of the theater, yes, because you see most of our chemicals are fumes, so it's not advisable that you can eat from there. Yeah, but that, uh, otherwise it's not much. I mean, besides, you know, a, 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 dead, a dead person is more peaceful than a living person. For me, I think I find peace and I feel doing the right thing to help out, you know. Yeah. When, it, when is the first time that you came across death? It was in 1990, just after I left high school. And that was the first, that's before I even went to do what I have done. And I, it was, I was induced by my, of course, my late father. And from that time, I think up to now, I don't forget that first uh, body I saw. But with time, I, tend, I got to you know, get used to see dead bodies and things, and it has just been How part of my life. How difficult was that death so much for that? Even because it was, as the saying goes, the first cut is the deepest. It was the first you know, body I saw in my life. And what was the reaction immediately you saw it? Well, it was not easy. I, to be honest with you, I even dreamt <laughs> over it. But with time, that encouraged me, gave me the strength. And here I am. It's just one of those things now. What stigma comes with handling death every day? I mean, society looks at people like you. Well, society. when I was like, like you know, yeah, when I was just starting, because I was quite young back then. If you're talking of 1990, I was, I was quite young. I think I was only 20, 21 somewhere there. Yeah. So if you look at that time I was starting, yes, the the stigma, it was it was there. People, they, I could feel it because people associated us with, you know, like you had earlier said, rituals, you know, whereby maybe these people have gone through a lot of these, you know, traditional, you know, you know, is it, uh, you know, a lot of things like people who just associated it with, you know, medi medicines and things like that. But otherwise, after it all, when people tend to start appreciating and understanding the services which you provide, they found it so normal now, and I think if you look around, a lot of funeral homes have mushroomed, and the people who are running them are young boys now. So I think we, I, I'm proud to say, I was a pioneer, and I removed that stigma, and at least people are now appreciating that this, this is just a normal, you know, in the, like any other normal job we can do. What role did your father play in making you become the funeral director that you are? Oh, I mean, a lot actually. He gave me the strength, he gave me the encouragement, and besides, we was, you know, at the time he was alive, I never thought each time he would say, one day you'll be the one to take over from here. I thought maybe it was just a story, but this time around, that's when I realized that whatever he had, you know, put in and to see me grow to this, it's now, you know, I can see the fruits out of what he is putting into But me. before then, he himself yes. used to do this kind of business. Yes, what did. was your reaction towards him? Well, I didn't, because to be honest with you, I never thought much or did I say, think much about what you, because he has been a medical person. Before he even ventured into this, he used to, he used to see, you know, uh, patients at uh, university teaching hospital, pediatrics, that time, yes, as a clinical officer. So before he graduated to what he became to align with this, you know, profession. So for me, I understood my, and my mother besides was a nurse. So I understood them from that medical background. So it was not really something new at the time I saw him get into this. Do you tell your children what you do? Yes, well, like my daughter, I have a daughter. She's a big girl now, <laughs> 20, about 26 years old. She comes here, yes, but she's done something different. She's a She's done PR, she's a PR manager at some university, Eden University. What does she do each time that she comes in? Well, she sees what we do and she actually is, she's used. She can stand the dead body, she can stand seeing coffins. Yeah, she's used. Does dealing with death bring you to reality that one day you yourself, you will die? Oh yes, I mean, I saw it from my father. I never thought each, we could talk each time we would maybe be in the theater and he would tell me to say, you know, one day, it will be either you or me lying here. So these are the things which you have to understand that we're just passing through this earth, we're visitors. Do you cry at all? Yes, I do. I, I lost him, I cried, I lost my wife, I cried, I lost my other two brothers. I do mourn, I have good feelings. <laughs> <laughs> because people look at you, people mm -hmm. like you. 
as people that operate in a different realm altogether. Oh, yeah. uh, do you consider yourself as a normal person given all yeah, this? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know how you found me today, but I think uh, you, you've seen around the way I run around uh -huh. running this busy. Do I, don't I look normal? <laughs> you do. You do. But Steve been there. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. But at least I'm normal. Uh, okay. Mm. One of the things that I know you uh, away from this mm -hmm. job is that you you like unwinding. You like having oh, yeah. a good time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, <that's> <laughs> in connection with what you do. You can be quite prolific at the back end. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's absolutely good. nothing to do with that. No, 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 no not at all. Yeah. So what has this job taught you about death? Death is a privilege of human nature. Mm -hmm. Life without is not worth our taking. So death is just part and parcel of us. Okay? It's part of our life. So what I've learned about death is you can be what you can be in society, in life, okay? But there will always be a day where you have to at least answer the call from himself, the Almighty. So I think what I've just understood, death is just part and parcel of our lives. What was the experience of handling the late president's body, Manawasa's body? Well, when he was a president yes. and then suddenly is there lifeless you are attending to him? No, for me, the only thing I would say it was just a great honor to the country, the government of Zambia to have actually called to us handling him. Is there any difference in the way that you deal with bodies of prominent people compared to a Kennedy government? No, no, no. We we respect, and we, there's no nothing. They will respect all the dead people. Who, uh, same in the same way as we do. Be it prominent, be it Kenneth Gondwe, they are all respected according to. We all we do it exactly the way we do with someone who's prominent. There's nothing different about it. I'm not pushing death on mm. myself, mm. but one day my family brings my body to mm. me. What would be your reaction? Mm. <laughs> well, to be honest with you. I will attend to you definitely, and uh, my reaction, of course, I will know. It's the person that I had talked to because I did that to my brother. You can imagine, eh? mm -hmm. when I lost my two brothers, I did attend to them. It was not easy though, but I managed to, with the strength of my father, then because he had, that time he had not died yet. Mm -hmm. So he taught me how to handle things, you know, with funerals of close relatives or friends. How do you handle it? It's not easy, but I do it. I do it. I don't know how I manage. I think with God's grace, I manage. Are you afraid of ghosts? No, if he says I've never seen one. <laughs> I have been doing this over 25 years, I've never seen any ghost. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How different is it to handle a body of a person who dies from a natural cause, uh, for instance, illness, hmm. compared to an accident body? Well, it's easier to deal with a person who dies from a natural cause because uh, the body is intact and things like that. But for an accident case, there's a lot of reconstruction which is supposed to be done. The skin drafting, just in case maybe some part of the face could have been ripped off and everything. We we'll do some skin drafting, reconstruction of the face and, you know, maybe the scalp and everything. There's more work on a, an accident case than a normal death. And from a psychological perspective? Ah, well, it's for me, I think it doesn't get there. I mean, I just manage. <laughs> How lucrative is this business? Well, it is. <laughs> you would say, <laughs> as you have put it, it is, but um, yeah, it's, you know, it's a service. <laughs> yeah, as I would say, yeah, it's a service. But of course, it also mm -hmm. brings up. Bring yeah, up. just to maintain, you know, the standards and, you know, to keep out people who help out, the workers and everything. Yeah, at least we are managing here and there. And how are you coping with the business? It's okay. The it has come highly. Yeah, the competition is quite high now. Because they see the problem is that we are having these foreign, you know, companies coming to establish here, where they have coming with big capital and everything. As we've been struggling within, the, you know, uh, little resources and things like that, you know, we have been having challenges to get loans from our, you know, banks and everything. The interest rates are quite high. You know, where you'd want to grow and things like that. So, but despite that, uh, we are managing. As being one of the first funeral parlor in the country after. Um, the first one which we had, we are still surviving. What yeah. advice would you give someone wanting to take uh, your career? Well, I think 
Ah, well, I think it's good that they take it up. They take up the challenge. <laughs> I mean, one day we won't be around. So we need people to come behind us and take up where we live. Uh, where we, yeah. Would you want that legacy to continue? In the Absolutely, it is. Because already my daughter's got an interest. So is my nephew, my brother's son. So I'm sure after us, the brothers go, I'm sure our kids will take over. Yeah. Thank you very, very much, uh, Alfred. Please uh, look after my body one day when you take that Pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much. I will do that. <laughs> okay. All right, okay. <laughs>